Hello and welcome to the selection panel for Wisden's current World Test 11. Wisden.com featured a Taha Hashim and Wisden India editor Adya Sharma are here to help pick the team. Now, before we get started, here's kind of what we're aiming for. The best available test side right now to play anywhere in the world. And it's kind of up to our panellists, whoever they want to define that. It's also up to them how much they look at current form versus overall quality. That's down to them. Uh, as is how much you attempt to change a player's usual batting position and role in the team. So there's be a fair amount of room for sort of discussion and debate, uh, as well as ob- obviously a few players nailed on. Uh, let's start with the openers. Uh, Rohit was in all of our teams. Uh, Adia, why did he make the cut for you? Um, I think he's he's done really well uh, over the last year or so. To uh, to you know to basically. Uh, you know, there is so much, so much discussion around him as a test player, and he's 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 remarkably improved. And I think the most important bit has been how he's improved overseas because that was always sort of a concern for him. He did well uh, at home. He has been doing well at home, and uh, that purple patch started from 2019. But you know, to do well in Australia, um, and then England, that that really, uh, you know, seals the deal for me. Yeah. I think it would be interesting to know if we'd picked this before this English mm. summer, before he'd had that kind of bumper series, whether he'd have got in, because at that point he looked promising in Australia and had all the home runs. But would we have felt then that he was nailed on? I don't know. Yeah, and uh, I mean, that that's a key point. But I, one of the things I find sort of remarkable about, about Rohit is um, the fact that, you know, he'd done this in ODI cricket for such a long time. And it was only in 2019 that he finally got the gig. And I mean, he's been incredible since. But just the fact that it took that long to say, oh, you know what? He, you know, he's, he's doing okay in the 50 year stuff. Let's, let's see how he does in the test stuff. So I, I think that's, that's I don't know, I've, I've found that quite strange. And it's, it's great that he's finally got the go, isn't he? Yeah, anyway, yeah. He's, 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 got, he's, got the, he's got the record. He's got the technique. He does it everywhere. He's a, he's a shoe in uh, Our second opener slot, though, there was quite a bit of sort of debate here and kind of a philosophical debate, I guess, over what you should do when constructing these teams. Do we go for a specialist opener or do we fit in an extra middle order player? And I suppose to an extent, it depends on who the other opener is. Mm. Uh, Adia, you went for Sri Lanka's Dimuth Karunaratne. Do you want to make the case for him? See, uh, I, I do uh, I do want to include him because he's been so good recently, but uh, I think that bias comes from his recent form and it has got a lot to do with his, you know, last five innings or so that really inflates his average. And, uh, but, but he's been so good. He's been so good. Uh, you know, averaging 60 in the last one and a half years. Uh, I, of course, the only concern then lies in how good he is away from home. And, and uh, that, that does cast a bit of doubt on, on, in my head as well. Yeah, I mean... I was tempted by him, especially obviously when he gets 100, you know, the day before we record, it makes it quite tempting. And he has a very good record in the last couple of years. But then I, when I dug a bit deeper, I kind of felt, so he's got a brilliant record in Sri Lanka. He's got a good record in the UAE, a good record in Zimbabwe, and kind of hasn't got a huge amount to shout about anywhere else. He's only got two other hundreds, one in South Africa where he averages 25, uh, one in New Zealand where his record is okay. But I kind of felt that if we want an all-format opener, Karina Ratna is not that guy. If we were going for a specialist opener, my shout would be Tom Latham, who doesn't have a great record over the last couple of years. But I think if we were picking this team at the end of 2019, the start of 2020, he'd be right bang in there. He'd averaged, I think, 55 across the last three years, was getting, you know, double hundreds, was uh, was doing everywhere. He's sort of tailed off a bit. But I kind of think that that's, there's a little bit of form there. He's in, haven't played too much. And that's why I would have gone with him. But Taha, you went a different way. <laughs> Uh, do you want to tell us who you, who you went for? I like I like the Latham argument. He's also a key part of the best test team in the world. Yes. Um, I went for Manus just because I was trying to fit in all those middle order guys, and he's you know he's Australia's number three, averages seventy as um, as a three, you know, beyond the the over, already incredible average of sixty, and I kind of had to get in him get him in somewhere. Um, and that's, that's the only place I could find. I wasn't, I, you know, I don't think, um, you know, the cases of, so Rohit's case is overwhelming, isn't it? Yeah. Because what have he's done? The, the cases of 
the two girls we're talking about aren't aren't of that level. So I thought I'd just fit in minus somewhere. I mean, the the guy averages sixty in Test cricket, so he's, he can, he's he can probably face team. a new ball. Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah, and, and he does you know he does even better overall as a number three. So I think kind of, that kind of that's that's how I got that's how I got there. We should probably come back to this one with I guess it's probably Latham or Manus, but I think mm. I imagine we'll end up going with Manus because you end up realizing who you're going to have to leave out to get Latham in yeah. and that sort of becomes a bit of a silly decision in a way. My the, the only sort of argument I was having with myself with Manus is that he hasn't played a lot of test cricket away from home. So obviously Australia haven't played an away test since the 2019 Ashes. Oh, but then again, he was very good in that series. So yeah. Okay. Well, let, let's move on to, I, I think also Manus got in all of our teams, I think. Um, uh, and with good reason. I mean, he, uh, yeah, he was he was brilliant when he came in during that 2019 Ashes, but has been has gone to another level when he. Uh, oh no, sorry, he didn't get in your team, Adia. Sorry, uh, Manus got in my team, but he didn't get in your team, Adia. What, what have you got against up Manus? I think the same thing that I mentioned about you know the away record. Now we haven't seen enough of him, and I think I was uh, somehow looking to put in two specialist openers so that that really. Made it difficult to to push Manus in, but hey, I love to watch him back. This is and what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying. Forget the openers. It's fine. Yeah, I, I think I think it's fine then. I think it's fine if you bring Manus. Yeah. Um, so on to the middle order, uh, and come coming back to the opener slot a little bit later. Uh, one player who we've all got is uh is is Joe Root, the man himself, Taha. Well, he's what, he's number one in the world right now, mm -hmm. isn't he? Um, yeah, I mean, he's just had a phenomenal year, so he's in form. He's also got the career record to sort of tell us that this isn't just like a, a one-off. He's he's been here for ages. He's he's been there, done that everywhere. Kind of has nailed it in, you know, nailed it everywhere apart from really Australia, which obviously we'll see now if he can finally get a ton there and kind of tick that box. But that's a pretty pretty easy call. Yeah. Um on the other, I guess, so you, I guess there's the, the big four batsmen of which we've all got, uh, we've all got Root. <laughs> None of us have got Coley, which is interesting, but I suppose fair enough considering his recent record. Taha, we've both gone for Steve Smith, but Adi, you haven't. Do you want to make the case for your other two, I guess, at four or five, uh, Babar and Fawad Alam? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, again, what works against Australia players is that they haven't played a lot in the re in recent times, and and I think a lot of my team uh, formation is bu is built on that. Uh, that said, Babar has has done really well to to you know um, to become sort of that that player who can do well in all formats. He's really improving as a test cricketer. Uh, Fawad's story has been pretty incredible, and you know the, he has the numbers to back them uh, in recent times. So again, again, my team is you know is is built more on 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 recent record. For Fawad, you know, he's played like not not as many games, but you know, even in like um, away from home, he averages like 47, 48 in the last one and a half years since his comeback, basically. So I, I think those two fit in because of that. Uh, keeping Smith out was obviously a big big call, uh, but again, that's only because of of uh, how many games he's played recently. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because when you talk about Fowd, it's like, yeah, that is quite persuasive. And then I think, like, can you really not pick Steve Smith over him, <laughs> basically? Uh, Babar is even more interesting. And that's probably, I think, that, are we? Are, are you are you happy with Steve Smith as well, Taha? Oh, no, he's got to be in. Yeah, so <laughs> I think <laughs> Root, and, Root and Smith, I think, get in. And then that's where we come to, and obviously Labashen gets in somewhere. And that's where we come to, Obviously, looking at the team balance, do we have an all-rounder at number six? Do we have keeper at seven and four bowlers? Or as Adj has gone for a keeper at six and then five bowlers? Mm. Uh, do we uh, do we go for for for, for Babar, who's sort of the the inform guy, or do we go for someone like Kane Williamson, who's obviously got the uh, a bit more of the overall record? That that's 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 where it gets tough. Mm. Um, you've got Kane Williamson. Uh, yeah. I don't know if there's much of a case you made, but I guess, I guess you want to argue for him over Babar, I suppose. Um, yeah, I mean, he's, 
he's Ken Williamson. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. He's, but then Bad Boy's Bad Boy. No, you know? yeah, no, no. Okay, I get that. But Williamson has has the record. But also he has the big, the big, the big thing he's added to the CV this year where he's captained, um, you know, the side that won the World Test Championship. Um, so, you know, I just, I find, I'd, I'd find it hard to, to look past him. It, with the with the whole with the whole big four thing, um, you know, I thought I thought it was very easy to kind of I, w- I wouldn't say very easy, but it was it was kind of it was kind of it felt very justified to leave Coley out because he's not you know he's it's been two years now since that last century, so it's it's been a while. Um, but with the other three, I couldn't really look past them. I mean, Williamson Williamson I, had that bumper home summer, didn't he, last summer as well? He um, did. Where you know New Zealand, you know won those series to get into the final, and then he plays a pretty handy knock in the final itself. Um, so he's kind, he's kind of he's got to be in there, surely. Yeah, I mean Williamson for me, I think I so I didn't have Williamson on my team in the end because I had Labuschagne, Root, Smith, three, four, five, and then I had uh, the all rounder at six that we'll get to. Williamson for me of those sort of big four batsmen, I guess, is the one with the patchiest overall record in that. Uh, he's got obviously a brilliant record at home. Uh, he's got an amazing record in the UAE, which is obviously very creditable. But then he's got, you know, good numbers in West Indies, Zimbabwe and Bangladesh. And then he's a bit weaker in England and India. Is that record in Australia is pretty good, but it's not standout. He's got a pretty poor record in South Africa and in Sri Lanka. There are, there are gaps there, which there aren't in, say, the record of Joe Root or even Steve Smith to the same extent, mm-hmm. which is why, if we're looking for 11 around the world, I'm not saying that mm-hmm. edges him over Babar, because I think the Babar... You don't, I mean, if he'd had a bumper series against England last year, he looked pretty yeah. good. He sort of looked the, the part, but he didn't get that sort of statement score. Mm. If he'd had that, I think I'd be pretty confident with yeah. Babar over Kane. Uh, but I can just about see, if we are going Lampachain as opener, I can just about see having Kane in at number five. But And I, I, is, the, is the leadership argument, argument persuasive as well? Yeah. Because I'm trying to look for a, for a captain here as well yeah that's true um, I mean you know you've got Steve Smith the disgraced Robert Sharma the T20i captain Joe Root the England captain uh, but Kane Williamson is yeah he, he's, he's the leader the, in that he's the world in, yeah. that, in that pack yeah you've, I mean in the team that you've picked you've got a future Australia captain somewhere I think uh, but yes potentially yes okay so how do we feel then about what kind of feels like a top five of Rohit Labuschagne Root Smith, Williamson, or Adia, are you going to dig your heels in and say Baba of Williamson? Uh, well, Taha does make a pretty convincing case <laughs> in the captaincy element as well. <laughs> so, so it 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 does. Uh, you know, see the reason why I did not pick Williamson was that he he did have a great home summer, but again, if you think about all conditions, those two big, you know, those two double centuries really do, uh, you know play a big part in, in his, his record recently. Um, I think I'm fine with Williamson again, only because Taha mentioned the captaincy element. <laughs> and it's, it, he has a trophy at the end of the day. And it, 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 it is, you know, he, he did lead his into it. So yeah, I, I think I'm fine with that. Yeah, I've just looked at Bawal's record again and it is really good. But I think, yeah. I th- I th- I think let's go Williamson. Uh, well, I've started off really well here. <laughs> yeah, very, very we've basically got your top five, have I'm we? I'm very happy with that. Um, so we, we actually, we have all gone for an all-rounder, but mm. we've gone for different all-rounders. And this is, again, sort of a bit of a philosophical thing where Taha and I have both gone for Ben Stokes, but can he kind of like get into a current world level when he hasn't played? You know, I mean, I suppose the Australians haven't played test cricket like less recently than Ben Stokes has, but still when he sort of, when we don't have that sort of recent thing to remind us how good he is, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess if we were doing this 12 months ago. No question. Would, yeah. yeah. Um, but Adya, you, you've gone for uh, a different all-rounder. Do you want to make your case for Ravindra Jadeja? 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 Ravindra Jadeja? Well, his numbers do make a case for himself, uh, for him. But uh, I mean, just just the evolution of uh, Jadeja, the cricketer of the last two, three years, especially as as you know, uh, a lower order batsman who can really bring the team up when the chips are down. Uh, he's done really well. Averages, I don't know. He was he was doing really well in the last uh, two three years. Averages over fifty or something. I, I'm not sure of the number. 
uh, his his bowling dipped a bit in recent times, but overall, if you look at uh, you know how he's done in the last one one and a half years or so, he really is. And and I had Stokes. I had Stokes in my initial draft. I, I you know given the player he is, just again because he hasn't played as much recently, I I picture Asia. Yeah, it's. I think it's. It's. Um, so Ben with Stokes, you would have him at six, right? Basically. That's where I'd have him. Yeah. So this is the thing where Jadeja then looks a pretty appetizing proposition if you've got um, your wicketkeeper at six, then then you have Jadeja. So I, 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 I kind of thinking about it now, I do like the idea of um, Jadeja at seven, especially because that gives you two spinners really. Um, and also, not many teams are making their way past that top five, are they? Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, okay. So it sounds yeah. like we're getting somewhere. The, um, yeah, because if we're talking about playing, you know, anywhere basically, and you've got the prospect of, you know, two spinners both turning it different ways, of course, oh, that is assuming the other spinner is who we, our other who off spinner we, is. Yeah, 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 is an off spinner. Um, then, then that is quite, yeah. That's persuasive, yeah. Quite okay. persuasive, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we've got one to five and number seven. Uh, our wicketkeeper, Adria and I agreed on this. Taha, you had someone else. So we both had uh, Mohamed Rizwan. And I, so when I was picking this level overall, actually, I was trying to do it mostly based on uh, impression and sort of how I, how good I kind of felt the player was rather than getting too deep into numbers because, as you say, you get weird things with sample sizes where some players have played a couple of games, some players have played loads. And Rizwan just seems like the wicketkeeper right now. First, he's a brilliant gloveman, but also you can just kind of rely on him to get runs kind of in whatever situation and kind of whatever type of runs you need, basically. He's got, a, he's very good technically. Uh, and I, and some, so some of this is kind of based on his white ball form, but I think that is kind of fine because he's kind of got those white ball runs in a way to make you feel that actually he is just a man for all situations, I guess. Um, but you've gone for someone else, Taha. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've gone for Quinton de Kopp, who has um, not only kind of recent form, he did really well against West Indies earlier this year, um, but he's also got just the overall career record. You know, he's just under 40 after 53 tests, which for a wicketkeeper is, you know, exceptional. Um, but, you know, I can get, I can, I can be talked around this. Mohamed Rizwan is one of my favourite cricketers in the world right now. Um but, I mean, yeah, you know, instantly, as we were looking at this, before I looked at any stats, whatever, I thought, you know, best test wicketkeeper of the last few years, kind of, you know, Pant, Pant, Pant is still building a record, isn't he? Um, and is a pretty, yeah, I mean, he's a pretty appetizing pick as well. Yeah. Um, this is actually almost the hardest yeah, slot in the eleven. Is, I think it is. It's kind of. Is it, is it really those? It's those three, isn't it? Uh, yeah, but doesn't get close. Tim Payne, obviously. If, if again, if we'd been having this discussion before the World Test Championship final, maybe BJ Watling has a shout. Mm. But now that he's retired, um, Mishfiqur Rahim is also a very handy uh, wiki for batsman, uh, wiki batter. Um, yeah, but I didn't. Yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, I guess the the one thing against Rizwan is the sample size is still pretty small in that he's he's played 17 tests, which is a handful, but it's not loads. He's only got 914 runs in total. He does average 42, which is pretty good. Um, and I actually, yeah, for some reason, I, I'd, I'd got it down to de Kock versus Rizwan in my mind without and sort of, sort of discounting Rishabh Pant a little bit, but probably unfairly considering that it was pretty recently he had that amazing series in Australia and again, and, and that amazing 100 against England uh, in India. And he averages again, he averages 40 after 25 tests, three amazing hundreds. Uh, I mean, I don't know you had Rizwan originally. Is anything that anyone said change your mind at all? Uh, for me? Yeah. Uh no, I think it's Rizwan for me. Uh, depends again on the batting also that, uh, you know, that precedes. Uh, Rishabh Pant, obviously, a great batsman. Uh, I think the only thing that comes with him is sort of that uh, doubt over his cons consistency. And I, I think on that front, 
Rizwan has done really well. Those those strings of five fifties or something. A uh, great technique, sort of the player who who you know who can do really well across across conditions, across attacks. Um, in that sense, yeah, I, I think I'll be wary of keeping uh, both Jadeja and Pant, although India have them, have them. But uh, uh, yeah, having both in the middle order, I think Rizwan provides more solidity. Yeah, I guess there's an argument as well that with the way that our team is set up, that gives you that gives Rizwan the edge possibly, in that. If you if you want your keeper to be at seven, then you can indulge sort of a pant or a decock. If you want that keeper to be a top six batter, and you want them to be kind of like building in innings and have a player that can sort of make a partnership with the guys in the top five. But I don't think Quinton de Cox an indulgence. No, I mean, I mean, yeah. and, and not, neither is Rishabh Pant. They're both brilliant players, yeah. and that's the point of these: is these, that you, yeah. you get to choose between no, brilliant no, no, players. I, I know what you mean in terms of de Kock is a, you know, he's more the flair. Yeah, and Jadeja while... is almost in that de Kock. Rizwan is more workmanlike. Uh, he, he, I mean, he, he builds in innings. I'm not, not yeah. the not the Kock can't do that, yeah. but he does build in innings in a different way. And and Rizwan has also, I mean, I guess it's interesting in that he hasn't. Since he's sort of gone to another level in T20Is, he hasn't had the chance in Test cricket too much to show uh, that it's taken it to that level as well. But I kind of just fancy that it has, basically. I think that if Rizwan and Pakistan play a Test tomorrow, uh, well, I mean, they're playing one at the end of the week, I would back him pretty well to score pretty heavily, basically. Well, I'm, I'm outnumbered, so... Okay, <laughs> so we're, we've, got, we're, we've, got, we've got Rizwan at six, okay. Uh, another piece of agreement before we get on to, actually, and I said the week he was hard, the quicks are probably even harder uh the other spinner we've all got ashwin uh obviously not good enough to get into the india test 11 in england but is good enough to get into our world 11 to play in any conditions uh adya you're obviously a big fan of his i've been nudging you to sort of write sort of a, a lyrical thing about uh about how lovely it is watching him bowl in any format uh so 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 take it away on on our ashwin oh you know the leader of all leaders. He's, he's, he's so good. He's so, you know, he, he's done so well recently and he's done so well over the past how many ever years. And, you know, it just seems like he continues to get better. Uh, there was always this question mark over his uh, overseas record and he hadn't done as well. He used to, you know, there was not much uh, spark in his bowling outside. But the way he bowled in Australia and then, you know, it, it just felt like he's, he's such a complete bowler now. And it's a pity that we couldn't see that in England. But uh, yeah, for me, he, he's right there. And he, and he can bat too, which is useful. Um, okay. So there was one quick that we all had. Uh, might well be Australia captain in a couple of days' time. Uh, Pat Cummins. I think, again, if you're looking for, for doing it anywhere, I mean, it's just that method that he has, isn't it? He's almost like, in a way, he's like, you know, Glenn McGrath, but like a little bit quicker. He's just relentless, sort of probing where the off stump. He's got enough skill to sort of challenge uh, challenge the best players, but he's not also reliant on those skills. He's not like he de- depends on seam movement or on swing because he just recognised that if you are quick enough and honing in on that accurate area that you can kind of, you can contribute basically wherever. You can also bat, which is useful. Uh, I don't think there's any debate that, I mean, Pat Cummins is the best test bowler in the world right now, which is but test quick in the world right now, just about. I mean, he's one we all had. Yeah, I mean, it was a pretty easy pick. Yeah. Um, best test bowler? Probably, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Well, we're going to talk about other quicks this year as well. Right? Yes. So. so, the next guy that we're going to discuss is a player that, uh, uh, that Taha and I both had, but that Adi didn't have, which is uh, Jasper at Bumrah. Um I kind of feel that just he's just such an attacking weapon, that especially an attack like this isn't going to go for many runs. Obviously, he doesn't go for many runs either, but he can just like you saw it on that that last day uh, in, in England, oval. yeah, the oval yeah. where he, uh, uh, you know, where, where he just he can just change the game in an instant and take the pitch completely out of the mm. equation because he's like no other bowler in the world basically because he's it's, it's obviously the speed but it's how he bowls the ball the sort of the unusual release trajectory point. and release point and just and just and just everything about him is just so unusual and so effective uh and again he's done it in lots of different places and done it for a reasonable amount of time now that that was why he made it for me um there so that that's we've both got him so i think that's probably the guy with we should probably get him in there 
into the last slot, there have been four different players named between who've kind of got one vote each. So I guess we should discuss each of them and then I don't know how we're going to decide this one because it's basically impossible. Uh, Adja, you've got uh, Shaheen. Yeah, I had some variety to my bowling attack. Um, he's, he's, he's done well. Recently also, uh, you know, against... The only thing again is that these numbers, like my, my pick was based on, on recent form and he had good numbers. But again, the problem is that it was against sort of, uh, you know, weaker batting attacks like West Indies and Bawe. Uh, but I, I still think that, uh, you know, there's so much more to to get out of, of Shaheen Afridi and, you know, we, we keep watching him and he, he keeps improving. Yeah, I think in that sense, he he does. For me, I, I thought of Bumrah again, but uh, this, was, this was before the conversation. Yeah, I thought of Bumrah again, but uh, there was a dip in the middle. And I think in that sense, I just, I just picked Shaheen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and Shaheen was brilliant in that West Indies series. I mean, there's not, there's no, there's not an argument against him in a way. And I imagine that in two I'm, years' time, he'd be an absolute shoe in. I, I considered him, but I'm. It's almost like a yeah, like you said, it's kind of, it's still early days for him. Um, I mean, he's got, he's got it all. He can do everything. You know, he's incredible with, you know, we we saw it in the World Cup. You know, when he's got the new ball, you know, he can swing it. He's got the height to get that bounce you can you know you can bowl as yorker you can bowl a pretty mean short ball you can kind of do everything um and it's uh, the signs are there that it's coming together in test cricket now it's now now he just has to i mean he's already got a decent record but now he's just got to keep building it yeah um, i think this is it's slightly different to the wicketkeeper debate where you have obviously de Kock has the record over a long period of time but with pan and rizwan you are going a bit on potential but with the quicks there are just so many quicks that have done so much i think that was what edged out Shaheen for me and that you are just if if he'd done what he's done for like a, a couple more years and if he goes to you know to to, to Australia and to England and properly tears up trees there then I think you have a real case but just for the moment that was it for me uh, I guess at the other end of the spectrum is the other guy you've gone for Adia which is uh James Anderson and it's I guess surprising that the the, 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 the two the two English journos haven't gone for Anderson and you have uh what I guess what what is it about Anderson that kind of still sets him apart now um, I mean, to see him bowl the way he did in, in India uh, earlier this year uh, just made me think that, you know, how can a bowler be so good at this age? And, uh, you know, for me, he continues to be, you know, one of the best in the world. And, uh, yeah, I think I think those numbers also speak for themselves in, in, the, in the last one and a half years. I think since the, uh, since the start of 2020, he has the most wickets, I think. But yeah, he, he's done really well across four months. I want to know why you guys didn't pick Anderson. <laughs> it's again, it's it's not not picking Anderson. I think it's picking someone else. I think. Uh, and again, if if you're looking for a bowler who was in who's kind of a bowler in, in in a middling Test team, which is what England are at the moment, and that you can just you can just I mean, he was incredible in not just in India, where was, there was that uh, amazing double strike with those kind of identical in swingers, but also maybe his his one of his best ever five for in Sri Lanka where like a far, like a fast bowl um, well a, a fast medium bowler should not be able to not go for any runs and be that incisive on a pitch as unhelpful as that and yet he was so, so he he's, he was astonishing but you can just poke just the tiniest holes in his recent record I think there were some patches last summer as in in 2020 when he was not quite at the level of England's other bowlers and again recently there's been this sort of this slight question mark over him in the second innings of matches. Obviously, we shouldn't struggle, struggle too much in the second innings with Jadeja and Ashwin, but uh, there's just just those, those the, the tiniest early signs that the age is just maybe starting to catch up with him. That was why when I get him again, not writing Anderson off at all. He'll probably still be playing when he's 45, uh, but that I felt there were probably more rounded overall bowlers who have done it recently. And uh, yeah, that 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 was why I went against Anderson mm. basically. Um, the other guy I went for was Josh Hazelwood, who I wrote a piece about the other day because I think that he basically gets unfairly put in Pat Cum in shadow a lot of the time. And again, this is something that is based a bit on his uh, white ball stuff, but it is relevant because I think what we saw in the T20 World Cup is just that he has got just a little bit quicker, which does make him like a much tough prospect handle. Obviously, we've always, always known about, you know, the accuracy. He's been always quick enough. Uh, he's got the height to get that bounce on Australian wickets. Um, but I think 
his success in white ball cricket shows that he's kind of expanded his game overall to, I think, now be a handful anywhere. I guess the argument against it is that there probably isn't the the actual the, the record and the results to show that because he didn't play much in the 2019 Ashes um, and Australia have barely played away from home recently. So I can see why you go against him, but I do think he's a... Uh, he gets put in comes a shadow and that's not really fair. And that's kind of why I included him just to nod to him being like, I think you're one of the best bowls in the world, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Should I just go on mine? Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Okay, so mine is very much a, not a, based on a, a large record, just the recent form. And mainly because we're picking the best test team in the world right now. And you've got to have one more New Zealander, you know. Um, so I've gone, you know, we've got Williamson. I've gone for Jameson. Um, you know, incredible start to his test career. Player of the match in that World Test Championship final. You know, just a monstrous quick. Um, you know, I, I you know, obviously got quite a lot of batting depth there, but why not? <laughs> you know, stick him in as well. Um, yeah, but I mean, I could I could be quite easily talked around. There are, there are just quite a lot of great quicks out there right now. Um, but yeah, Jameson's just obviously just exploded onto the scene. And I thought, you know, I thought, yeah, that's not, that's not a bad first change there. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's just, it's just the eight tests, isn't it? And yeah. all in, is, as yeah, he said himself, true. all in reasonably helpful conditions. Yeah, that's true. Um, it is, it is odd. We're probably going to end up with just the one Kiwi in there. And in a way mm. he's the, almost the most contentious pick of the lot considering the Babar came and losing debate we had um but that also speaks to how good or to, to what makes New Zealand so good right is that there are no weak links in that team that you know from from Latham opening to you know Williamson Ross Taylor Henry Nichols Devin Conway uh yeah to, no one's we, dominating the attack which yeah is why you can't just like have one fixed in there yeah yeah so actually although I had Hayeswood in mind I think I'm most persuaded by Anderson yeah, I think the uh, the subcontinental argument is is a really strong one. Just how good he was there, like he just didn't he just didn't go for anything. He was yeah he was basically tying down tying down an end. Um, yeah, that's a pretty pretty yeah I, I do quite like that argument. And um, considering if this is hypothetical, we can hypothetically keep our attack fit, uh, and therefore maybe we can keep him slightly fresh for the second innings as well. Maybe who knows. <laughs> Um, but also in this attack, maybe you do just need someone to bowl six overs with a new yeah. ball on day one. And uh, that is definitely Anderson. Yeah. Um, cool. So, and we're happy enough with Labashain opening. Adia? Yeah, I think so. And happy enough with Williamson over Babar? Oh, uh, yes. Because okay. Baha convinced me with the captains. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that means that, our, that Wisdom's current World Test 11 is... Rohit Sharma, Manus Labashain, Joe Root, Steve Smith, Kane Williamson as captain, Muhammad Rizwan, Ravindra Dadeja, Ravi Chandran Ashwin, Pat Cummins, James Anderson, and Jasper Bumrah. And that is a pretty handy team. 